Welcome to Worship with Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. We aspire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. We connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. We pray that you find this worship experience meaningful, relevant, and faithful.
Thank you, Bells, for being in us in worship. Welcome to Worship with Susanna, Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is Andrew Connard. I'm the pastor here, and I'm so glad to welcome you to this worship service. Whether you're joining us here in person or whether you're online, we're so glad that you're connected today in this third week of Advent as we prepare for Christmas. As we begin our worship service today, we want to give a special welcome to those who may be connected for the very first time, and we want to say we're so glad that you're here. We want to invite you to get more connected in the life of the church, and one of the best ways to do that is to sign up for our weekly email newsletter. You can go to our website, share your email address, and we'll share an update every week about upcoming opportunities for you to grow in your faith and connect with others here with the Susanna Wesley community. Now, as we begin our worship service today, again, we continue with more special music. I'd like to invite the children forward to sing, What Child Is This? Now we'd like to invite the Lubruskis forward to light the Advent candles today on this third Sunday of Advent. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the Holy Way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. The prophet Isaiah tells us about the joy of ascending to God's house. 
The prophet tells us to imagine being free, unburdened, released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then he tells us that the journey is just as much joy. The psalmist says, happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who keeps faith, executes justice, and sets prisoners free. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. We light these candles, the candle of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, and deep and everlasting joy as a sign that we are those who walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination and it is pure joy. We are ascending to God's promise. I would like to make time for those of you that are here in the worship center to greet one another. Perhaps introduce your someone, uh, yourself to someone who you've forgotten their name or maybe you've never learned it. We invite you to stand and welcome your neighbors this morning and remain standing for a Susanna Wesley welcome. Good morning. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. We are Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. We aspire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. We seek to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. We connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. All people are welcome with no exceptions. You can be who you are, you can be any way you are, and you are loved. God speaks to us through words and music. I invite you to continue standing and join in singing our opening song. Show 
Will you please be seated? And as you're seated, I invite you to join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you have gathered us today to remind us that although you are the one to whom all power belongs, you care for the weak and the powerless. You care for us. We praise you, O God, for not only being the God of history, but the God of our story. We praise you for joining your story to ours in a particular way through Jesus, our Lord. He proved his great love for you and each of us in how he lived, releasing what was captive, lifting the burden, and empowering the powerless. O God, all source of love and kindness and strength, we worship you. Jesus, the foundation of our faith, we worship you. Holy Spirit, the very ground of our being, we worship you. Amen. Listen to God's word for us from the Old Testament, a reading from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The desert and the dry land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. They will burst into bloom and rejoice with joy and singing. They will receive the glory of Lebanon, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the Lord's glory, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and support the unsteady knees. Say to those who are panicking, be strong, don't fear. Here's your God coming with vengeance. With divine retribution, God will come to save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be open and the ears of the deaf will be cleared. Then the lame will leap like the deer and the tongue of the speechless will sing. The waters will spring up in the desert and streams in the wilderness. The burning sand will become a pool and the thirsty ground fountains of water. The jackal's habitat a pasture. Grass will become reeds and rushes. A highway will be there. It will be called the holy way. The unclean won't travel on it, but it will be for those walking on that way. Even fools won't get lost on it. No lion will be there, and no predator will go up on it. None of these will be there. Only the redeemed will walk on it. The Lord's ransomed ones will return and enter Zion with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Happiness and joy will overwhelm them. Grief and groaning will flee away. I invite you to join in our responsive reading for today. It's from Luke chapter 1, verses 46b through verse 55. With all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me a highly favored person because the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy. to God's word for us from the New Testament, a reading from James chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. Therefore, brothers and sisters, you must be patient as you wait for the coming of the Lord. Consider the farmer who waits patiently for the coming of rain in the fall and spring, looking forward to the precious fruit of the earth. You also must wait patiently, strengthening your resolve because the coming of the Lord is near. Don't complain about each other, brothers and sisters, so that you won't be judged. Look, the judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of patient resolve and steadfastness. 
I'd like to invite you to stand, if you'd like to, to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. Listen to God's word for us. Now, when John heard in prison about the things that the Christ was doing, he sent word by his disciples to Jesus, asking, are you the one who's to come, or should we look for another? Jesus responded, go report to John what you hear and see. Those who are blind are able to see. Those who are crippled are walking. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who were deaf now hear. Those who were dead are raised up. The poor have good news proclaimed to them. Happy are those who don't stumble and fall because of me. When John's disciples had gone, Jesus spoke to the crowds about John. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? A stalk blowing in the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed up in refined clothes? Look, Those who wear refined clothes are in royal palaces. What did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, he is the one of whom it is written, Look, I'm sending my messenger before you who will prepare your way before you. I assure you that no one has ever been born is greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. You may be seated. Have you ever heard an ad for a last-minute gift? Sure, those might make sense the day before you're to give the gift, or maybe even the week before, but I was looking on Amazon this week, which is kind of usual for me, and right at the top, the text read, the deals aren't over. I thought, really? Like I'm running out of time? There's plenty of time, isn't there? Christmas Eve services to plan. Yeah, still some gifts to get, clearly. Some Christmas lights to put up, but there's plenty of time, isn't there? Except... Now we're two weeks out from Christmas and Christmas Eve. The clock is ticking. Decisions still need to be made. There's questions to be answered, and we still need to find Jesus. Uh, More on that story in just a minute. Today we're continuing our worship series, To the Summit. During these weeks, we're using the Psalms to help set our direction and the mood for our feeling, uh, our series together. Psalm 122, verse 1 reads this, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let's go to the Lord's house. We are going to the house of the Lord with joy and with each other. Two weeks ago, we began the Advent season by going up for restoration through the Spirit of God. We can find the hope of Jesus no matter what our circumstances are. God continues to offer hope and possibilities even when it's hard to see them. Last week, we considered how we might stand as a signal of God's kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. And today, we remember that we are all on a journey. Now, let's find Jesus. You see, a colleague of mine in ministry was newly appointed to their congregation. It was time to decorate for Christmas, just like we are here, and the nativity set was missing an essential item. A central cast member of the drama of Christmas was missing the leading cast member. Where was Jesus? They looked everywhere. They even contacted the previous pastor, who it turns out had kept it in their office throughout the year for some reason, but it wasn't there. And then my colleague started to panic and think, did, did I somehow throw out Jesus in the midst of this transition? You know, when you come into a job with a workspace that someone else has used and you think, well, there's some things here that are worth keeping and there's probably some things that we can get rid of, right? Some things aren't helpful and some need to be cleared away. But couldn't have thrown away Jesus, could they have? Throw away a baby Jesus in the manger because it's in the wrong place? An office or a desk drawer is an unexpected place for baby Jesus, maybe, isn't it? Uh, Unusual place to keep a baby Jesus. Now, when I think about desk drawers, I think about a a drawer that we have in our kitchen. Um, It's the junk drawer. Maybe you have one of these in your house where you throw the stuff you don't know what to do with, but you know that you don't want to throw away. The hidden stuff, the forgotten stuff, some things are broken, some given by someone, but you've forgotten who. There's knickknacks and odds and bits and some toys, uh, Island of Misfit toys, at least in our junk drawer. It's not a place for baby Jesus, is it? A wasteland of stuff, some useful, some not, mostly unorganized and a little bit lost, just there in the drawer. But then, is there any place where Jesus doesn't belong? The more that we think about it, perhaps it's, maybe it's a great idea to keep the baby close to us all year long. Uh, amidst the rubble of my life or in the middle of the junk drawer where things seem to not have much worth, 
until it's time to bring it out at Christmas time again, to say, look, he's here. He's been here all along, right alongside our stories this year, through the joys and the heartaches, the struggles and the accomplishments, right there, maybe out of sight, but close by, within reach, even in the desert or the challenging seasons of our lives, seasons of grief or loss or pain or uncertainty, right there all the time, Emmanuel, God with us. This brings us to our scripture passage for today from Isaiah 35. Chapter 35 of Isaiah is considered a transitional chapter. I want to let you know a little bit about uh, this book. It's one of the most largest books of the Bible, and scholars talk about three different Isaiahs, though they aren't named, all contained within these 66 book chapters that bear that name. And this first chapter and this chapter is a transition between what's known as 1st Isaiah and 2nd Isaiah. Now, 1st Isaiah is essentially a warning The prophet was trying to warn, get God's people to see that their present course was going to end in disaster. The political relationships that they've created will be their end, and the road that they are on will lead to destruction and exile. But of course, what is true time and time again in the prophets, the people don't get it. And second, Isaiah is written during that time of removal when the people are taken into exile. But it's primarily about hope and a promised return. There is hope in 1st Isaiah, and there is a warning in 2nd Isaiah, but in the book's middle section, we're looking longingly for home. That is clear. From this place, we find that Isaiah is in, (coughs) excuse me, from this, am I on? All right, great. In this place, uh, in between 1st and 2nd Isaiah, we find that, uh, we are, uh, that the prophet is taking us to a new place. He's saying that we are on the journey home. Now, overriding the sense of unease and uncertainty from the first book, a word says that it won't always be this way. Th- this message doesn't come in some vague or impersonal way. It, it comes with exuberant joy. It comes with lushness and excess. It comes with promise and security. It comes with applause. The deserts and the dry lands will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. They will burst into bloom and rejoice with joy and singing. Waters will spring up in the deserts and streams in the wilderness. The waters, of course, such a temporary thing in that climate will break forth, splashing up, pouring out, rising high like the crossroads fountain at Evergy Plaza, like an open fire hydrant on a hot summer day, like a cold bucket of Gatorade dumped on the winning coach. We are all winners on the holy way that Isaiah puts out for us. We're all celebrated on the journey to where we belong. Listen again to Isaiah 35 verses 8 and 9. A highway will be there. It will be called the holy way. The unclean won't travel on it, but it will be for those walking on that way. Even fools won't get lost on it. That sounds pretty good. No lion will be there and no predator will go up on it. None of these will be there. Only the redeemed will walk on it. You see the promise? Not only is this the route home, but it is safe and secure. It's protected from all sorts of enemies and it has everything that you need. There's water to quench our thirst. There's some kind of divine GPS. We can't get lost. And better than that, our aches and pains, our brokenness, our infirmities, those things that we wish would disappear, do disappear on this journey. Our disabilities don't limit us. They don't handicap us. We can dance and sing. We can see and hear because the journey is beautiful and joyful. Best of all, however, is that we're not on this journey all by ourselves. We're not making our way independently of others. It's not a solitary journey where we cross the miles and work our way into the preparations to face a family who may seem to lift us up and knock us down simultaneously at times. Not to find your own way and the party starts when you get here, not at all. Because we remember that God has come. That's the reason for all the celebration anyway. God has come to bring us home. God has come to walk with us every step of the way. No wonder there's joy in our heads. No wonder sorrow and sighing shall flee away. No wonder there's dancing and singing and splashing in this passage. And then Isaiah tells us what we'll do on our way home, to this home of all homes, the home, the ultimate home of our heart and soul, the house that will make us whole again for the first time. And what we do is we share it. Listen as Isaiah tells us, you and me, what to do on our way in Isaiah 35 verse 3. 
Strengthen the weak hands and support the unsteady knees. Say to those who are panicking, be strong, don't fear. Here's your God coming with vengeance, with divine retribution. God will come to save you. Now, Isaiah isn't talking to God here. He's talking to us. He's talking to the people. He isn't telling us to strengthen our weak hands and firm our feeble knees, though God knows that they need strengthening and is there to provide it. God knows our hearts are fearful even at our best times. We can hardly think of ourselves as the best ambassadors of God's hope and grace, hardly the best witnesses to comfort and joy, and we are what God has to work with. We are the signs that the journey home has already begun. We are witnesses to God with us, to Emmanuel. We are the light in the darkness, announcing to all our neighbors that the season of joy and light, peace and goodwill is here. So tell those of a fearful heart. Tell those who may not have heard, be strong. Don't fear. That's why we're on this Christmas road as we make our way along the holy way of hope, peace, and joy. You see, the good news is that we can find joy when we follow the way of Jesus. It's a rhythm of the road. So be ready to look someone in the eye this week and tell them, be strong, don't fear. Because God looks at us and says, be strong, don't fear. We're heading to the promised land. We're on the holy way. We rejoice, we sing, we find strength to set our fear aside. We're on the journey to find Jesus. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for joining us along our way, for merging our paths with yours. Take our efforts, shine light through us so that we might share your good news with all we meet. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. How awesome it is. God with us revealed to us Emmanuel. Will you please stand up and sing Emmanuel, Emmanuel. <laughs> You may be seated. As a seated, I want to draw your attention to some upcoming events, some worship experiences this season that you might have the chance to connect with God and others. First is, uh, coming up, is our Blue Christmas worship experience. This is going to be Wednesday, December 21st at 7 o'clock. It's going to be here in the sanctuary. It's going to be a little bit, quite a bit different from what we normally do on Sunday mornings. It'll be an experience in which you'll have the chance to name that it might not all be joyful and merry for you this season. It might not be joyful and merry for your neighbors. And so we're going to make space for that and that remember that even in the midst of the darkness that God is light for us. So we invite you to our Blue Christmas worship experience December 21st. It's the longest night of the year. We'll start at 7, 8, 7 p.m. here in the worship center. And then Candlelight Christmas Eve on December 24th, we'll gather for worship here again at 7 o'clock. Um, we will be uh, light the candles. We will share the Christmas story. We invite you to invite your friends and neighbors to this candlelight Christmas Eve worship experience. And then the next day, Christmas Day, we'll have worship. It'll be online only. Um, you can find that on our YouTube channel, at our website. Look for that on December 25th. We also want to invite you to remember to um, use our spiritual practices to help us to become more like Jesus. And today I want to remind you about our invitation to serve 
to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world together by making a difference in the world around us. You can serve on your own by doing five acts of kindness every day, maybe to someone in your household, maybe to someone you see out and about in the store or at your place of work, five acts of kindness. We invite you to do that. And then we invite you to uh, serve with others in an opportunity here at Susanna Wesley at least once a year. There may be a few stars left on our giving tree. Um, you all are so generous with this every year. We've adopted a number of families directly, um, which is different than in years past. And so you have the chance to give a gift to make a difference in the life of a family here in Shawnee County. Be sure to check the tree as you're looking at those nativities. If there's any stars left, pick it up, bring your present back. It's a chance to serve with others. And now we come to the time in our service in which we pause for prayer. And there's a variety of ways we invite you to do that. You can pray with your eyes open or closed. You can sit where you are, or you can come up and light a candle if you would like as a symbol of your prayers, as a reminder to be the light of Christ, perhaps in honor or memory of someone. We'll begin with some quiet. I invite you to listen to the way that God is speaking to you and that you might offer your own prayers to God. I'll guide us in a time of prayer together and we'll continue with the worship service. So I invite you to be present where you are, to know that God's spirit is as close as the air that we breathe, and join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Come, Lord Jesus, come soon. We know that all will see when you reveal your glory. So come, Lord Jesus, come soon. Help us to sing out loud to the -the out-of-the-way places in Topeka and Shawnee County to share the good news of our God who gives us courage and strength. Come, Lord Jesus, come soon. Whether we are unsure what to believe or whether we believe at all, whether we are confident in our hope in you, open our ears that we might hear you speaking to us fresh and new. God, when we have thoughts of failure or feelings of grief, make your presence known for us. Listen to the cries of our hearts. When our hearts are heavy, when problems seem unable to be overcome, help us to follow your way and to take one step at a time, confident that you walk with us. God, your salvation is on the way. Your deliverance will be revealed. For a woman shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Come, Lord Jesus. Come soon. We offer all this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we've taken a moment to check in with God, I invite you to take a moment and check in and let us know that you're connected in worship today. Whether you're in person or online, you can use the Church Center app to check in. If you're online, you can use the form there at our website. Or if you're here in the Worship Center, just grab that Connect card out of the pew in front of you, fill it out, and drop it off in the box at the welcome table on your way out. 
We also want to invite you to consider giving to support our ministry funding plan. You can text any dollar amount to 84321. You can use the Church Center app to give one time or recurring, set up a recurring gift. Or if you're here in person, you can place an offering in the basket at the welcome table. Use an offering envelope in the pew or there at the welcome table as well. As you take a moment to do those things, I invite you to draw your attention again to our handbell choir. I invite you to join with me in our prayer of thanksgiving and the Lord's Prayer, as you'll find the words on the screen. Generous God, as we bring our gifts to you this day, we acknowledge that we have been given so much by your goodness, but we have been slow in offering to help others. Help us live in a new way, walk a new highway, and set ourselves on the path that leads to a closer walk with Jesus our example and redeemer. In the name that is above all others, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to stand if you'd like to for our closing hymn today. Good Christian friends, rejoice. Christ is born for this. The Christian friends. 
Go now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for connecting with worship this week. I hope you can join us again next week. To learn more about Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church, visit us online at swumc.org.